Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing the DC Comics trade paperback, Trinity, both written and drawn by Matt Wagner, with colors by Dave Stewart and letters by Sean Connaught, published in 2004. Trinity is not an overly complex scenario when you realize that Ra's al Ghul has enlisted the aid in the cause of destroying the world, both the failed Superman cloning experiment called Bizarro and a young and rebellious Amazon woman called Artemis. Sure, all of these aspects are a veritable mystery for our heroes, the titular trinity of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but their chasing down and ultimately unfolding this mystery isn't the charm of or the reason to read this story. It's by and large the interactions between the three, as they're only just getting to know each other. It's also the interpersonal look inside the minds of these three heroes, whether in dealing with their thoughts about each other, the mystery at hand, or their day-in, day-out challenges. In the case of Superman, even as the trains of Metropolis are always on time, as Clark Kent, he never fails to purposely miss one every week, so as to keep up the appearances of his alter ego disguise, being ever the bumbling goofball. And it works, signified by a newspaper seller at the train station who recognizes that Clark Kent is terminally late. What interrupts this little show of public obtuseness, however, is a sniper shot at the very train Clark's missed, and just as quickly does Superman arrive on the scene to stop the train from crashing, as the shot has taken out the driver. Enter the Batman, who picks up the lead of where these foes took off to, as Bruce Wayne just happened to be in Metropolis on what at first seemed to be an entirely different case altogether, but is soon unraveled to be just the first small steps into Raish al Ghul's overall plan of planet-wide destruction. What puts this aspect over the top is Raish is using Bizarro to up the stakes by having him steal an entire submarine endowed with nuclear warheads. Enter Wonder Woman, who, in reaction to one of those missiles being triggered earlier than necessary, assumes the reports of the blue tights and red cape-wearing foe to be the much-rumored Superman of Metropolis. What's wholly interesting here, as Diana enters the fray, is that Superman and Batman are at least familiar with each other. They talk privately in their alter-ego modes when they need to, suggesting they've been acquainted for a while, yet Wonder Woman's debut is largely her first meeting with them. She instantly apologizes to Clark at her assumption that it was he behind the missile theft, saying that making such a false accusation is almost as bad to her people as the crime itself. But of course, Superman tells her to forget about it. And so the three try their best to work together, with Bruce and Diana not being nearly as fast friends as she and Clark. She hates his way of doing things. It's truly man's way, in her estimation, to punch out a foe who's lassoed up, even after revealing as much as he knows about Raish al Ghul's plans and whereabouts. Yet there's somewhat of a polar opposite moment of intensity when man's games have gotten the best of Diana and she retreats back to her home island of Themyscira, which Batman and Superman follow her back to to see that she's all right. Bruce is so taken aback by the tropical paradise setting, his mind turns completely to instinct, and out of the blue he goes up and embraces and kisses Diana, to which she responds by nearly taking his head off, and as a result, Superman ribs him about it later. And that's one of the best aspects about Trinity as a whole, the fun little ribbings between them. Diana notes that Batman is so impressed by her invisible jet, he wants one of his own. Superman constantly notes how peeved Bruce can be, that no matter where he's hidden in Gotham, Clark always seems to find him without a problem, down to his super hearing, and all of the tracking devices the Dark Knight carries on his person. And Clark further gets a chuckle, a few times over, at Batman's unflinching desire to want to have a trump up his sleeve, to which Superman never acknowledges that he is always aware of, thanks to his abilities. And there's even a couple of occasions where I'm left truly feeling bad for Bizarro, a villain in the story, on an emotional level, as he's basically bested by Batman. And as beautiful and interesting as those moments are, and all the more reason to pick Trinity up and read it today, there is still one solitary moment that makes this book worth owning to me. In an underwater sequence with Batman chasing down a lead to Ra's al Ghul, he is suddenly surrounded by dolphins, and just as suddenly do they all dissipate and disappear entirely. Looking ever scrutinizingly out of the window, Batman suddenly yelps incredulously when he sees the face of a fair-haired, orange mesh tunic-wearing man appearing out of nowhere and looking back at him with a displeased expression before disappearing again himself. And thus we're given the first ever encounter between Batman and Aquaman in what is, for my money, a cameo scene that makes the price of admission worth every red cent. Trinity is by and large an interesting story, made all the more entertaining by these three heroes as they band together 
other for the first time, and come to appreciate each other's abilities and idiosyncrasies, and vow to aid one another no matter what. The art from cover to cover is absolutely perfect and complementary to the overall story. Neither aspect ever gets the least bit boring. I'll be rating the DC Comics trade Trinity a 5 out of 5. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of Trinity if you've ever read it, or if you'll be picking it up based on my recommendation. And otherwise, that'll be it for me. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.